Hi, I'm Jerry Tan. I am a dermatologist with 30 years plus experience treating acne patients, doing research in acne, and educating on acne. And I'm here to give you some information on why we get acne. So let's dive in. What is it that forces the transition to acne prone oily skin from unblemished childhood early teen skin? What happens underneath the surface? The structures include something simple to conceive of, the oil pump underneath the skin, and that pump generates oil to lubricate our surface of the skin, and it's delivered there by a tube. We call that the follicular sebaceous duct. And that sebum, that oil, then is brought up to the surface, and it then helps to lubricate also the internal aspects of that pore, because that's sometimes where hair comes out of, as well as the surface of the skin. During puberty, the changes in hormonal amounts like androgens as we drive uh, through puberty and our cells become more sensitive to hormones themselves, they become sensitive to many of the different growth hormones. Androgens are one of them, the other ones are insulin growth factor, and all of those can lead to increased oiliness of the skin because the glands themselves are more sensitive to the hormones. And increasing quantity of sebum is also accompanied by a change in quality of the sebum. The sebum becomes more pro-inflammatory, and that pro-inflammatory sebum can trigger off inflammation at the level of the oil pump, the sebaceous gland, as well as the level of the tube itself, the oil duct. <clears throat> now, as this oil courses through the duct, it can trigger off pore blockage by triggering features and changes within the duct to lead to blockage by increasing the proliferation of cells that make up the exit component of that duct. So as these block, they are then known as whiteheads or blackheads, also known as comedones. Within that pore, with that increased amount of oil, it leads to proliferation of bacteria within those pores. Now some of those bacteria are completely neutral or anti-inflammatory. Others are pro-inflammatory. These bacteria, cutie bacterium acnes, the pro-inflammatory phases, they can then proliferate more and generate more inflammation within and outside the duct and all through that tube along with the gland itself. And that can lead to an accentuation of all of the, the inflammation that was triggered by the oil now joined by the pro-inflammatory cutie bacterium acnes. Where did it all start? Started with hormones. Where did that lead to? Stimulation of the oil glands or the oil pumps. And that led to generation of sebum, which is pro inflammatory, the oil. And that led to blockage of the exit components of the oil itself from the duct. So that leads to comedones. The proliferation of bacteria due to that increase in oil then can lead to increased inflammation depending on whether it's the pro-inflammatory strains that are dominant within that particular pore. That's how acne develops. When we then look back on how we can help patients with acne, we have to think of all of the different ways we can impact those pathways to reduce their activation. But it all starts with hormones. That's where acne is different from folliculitis, where folliculitis is from bacteria or yeast that trigger off inflammatory changes within those units. In acne, the genesis, the beginning, is always driven by hormones. I hope this helps you understand the pathogenesis of acne itself. Thank you.